On today's episode, I'm going to be speaking with Mark of Jostens. We're going to discuss how and why podcasting was brought into their place of work, as well as how podcasting has helped foster communication across Jostens. Stay tuned and enjoy the episode. Mark, thank you so much for making the time to chat with us today. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's going great. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, it, it's an it's an honor to even be uh, considered uh, for an interview. So we're super excited to share whatever we can with you. Absolutely. And before we start our interview here, I want to give you the opportunity to tell people a little bit about Justin's and what you guys do. We're going to be talking about how you bring podcasting into your place of work. But for those who may be, I mean, a lot of people are obviously familiar with the work that you do, right. but I want them to really know who Justin's is before we jump into the podcasting side. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, we know the surface stuff, you know, we're a company that's been around for a long time, over 127 years, and we're famous for a lot of different things, you know, class rings probably come to mind and caps yep. and gowns and diplomas and yearbooks and school photography and so on. But we do so much more than that, which is the exciting part. We do a lot of work with schools in climate and culture and, and uh, how to make your environment better. Uh, and so there's really a ton of work that goes into it. Uh, and, and the exciting part is, is that there's never been more of a need at this point for some of the things that we do, not just the products, but also the services behind it. I remember when I first saw the name Justin's pop up into the roster of interviews. I know I was excited because I remember back to when I was in high school, when I was in college, yeah. that you guys were the first name when it came to rings. So yeah. for me, it kind of brought me back a couple of years. I won't say how many years to not yeah. do it myself, but <laughs> hey, nobody's asking. It's all good. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about some of the podcasting here. When yeah. did Justin's decide to bring podcasting into the place of work? Yeah, you know, one of the things is what COVID forced us to do. Obviously, we had a remote sales force to begin with, and but then our internal uh, force went went remote also. And so this whole communication thing became a real challenge for us. And we had just a variety of, of different uh, channels, like a lot of companies do. You know, we had the trusty, uh, trusty email blasts, and, and sometimes it was written, sometimes it was recorded. And then we would have uh, some webinars every now and then and in face-to-face -face meetings. And, and so when, when COVID came along, it, we were really looking to kind of streamline those channels and put it into one spot. Um, and, and Podbean and podcasting really became a, a pretty obvious solution once we started to explore and dig into it. And it allowed us to do a lot of different things and really give people uh, uh, both out in the field and internally uh, a single place to go for for information really at their at uh, on their schedule and uh, 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 and it made it easy it just streamlined the whole thing uh, and gave it a, a common kind of library if you will and I think that's what we've heard a lot through 2020 into 2021 is that, you know, when people think about what kind of strategies and what kind of tools they'd like to use for that kind of communication, you know, podcasting became one of the easier methods to do because there's yeah. a very easy entry point for creating, producing and delivering content. Yeah. Uh, but it's also, like you said, the ability to connect with people across the globe, really at whatever time yeah. is most convenient for them. Uh, so with all the different internal communications tools that are out and available, it sounds like podcasting was one that came to the forefront during this time for you guys. It really did. And it allowed us to do a couple things, which I, I think is really interesting. You know, if you look back at the communication before, we had some weekly updates and it was usually an email blast. And and it um, uh, most of the time it was when pr in print and then we evolved to video. And so it was a video file. Um, but what Podbean allowed us to do is, is take that and uh, build it in a different way, number one. And number two, we started to look at our audience and we started to segment it a little bit and we looked at their needs. And so it allowed us or empowered us, I should say, uh, to really start to deliver some different content that we had never done before that became critical during COVID times and, and working remote. Things like well-being, um, things like uh, training. Uh, we, so we developed several different channels. We ended up with about six that are internal. Uh, that uh, people can go to for, for obviously various 
uh, topics and, and targets. And so that aud it allowed us to really segment the audience and the topics uh, and, and made it super powerful where before we really didn't have some of that stuff. And, and so it became really obvious to us that we could, we could take our game to a completely different level. And regardless of whether it's COVID times or not, whether we're working remote or not, and I think, you know, we'll probably lay in some place in the hybrid model, um, you know, Podbean and, and these channels will become uh, instrumental in, in the uh, ability to help our, our team reach a, a completely different level and, and give them access to, to information and, and messages and, and knowledge and, and perspective that, that we probably wouldn't have had regardless. Now let's dive a little bit into that too, because I like yeah. to talk to different businesses about how they've, like what examples they might have of bringing podcasting into the workforce. But we kind of highlighted a couple in uh, the last conversation piece that you, uh, that you presented here. But you talked about that you have so many different channels. You have a couple of different ones for uh, different uses. How do you guys decide what channels and what filters you're going to use in your company? Like, how do you decide who's going to get what information and how did you come up with, okay, this is the kind of content we're going to create for this specific market? Yeah, I guess we, we kind of looked at it as, uh, okay, what, what are the different uh, themes that we want to communicate and what's the cadence that they go in? And, and so for us, what we ended up doing is we made some channels that, um, uh, one that is uh, like very general from the highest level. And it, it's kind of a monthly update from our very, very senior leadership, which is super powerful. Um, and, and not that we didn't have that before, but now it's in a regular cadence. And then we have kind of this level that is a weekly update uh, that comes down. It's focused mostly towards our, our sales team, but we knew that our, our salespeople uh, needed to be on top of all the comings and goings uh, of the week. Um, and so that weekly update became instrumental. But then we, we looked at um, how can we help our folks internally and externally uh, with some, some, some information or some skills or some perspective um, on a daily basis. And so that's where we took, uh, we call it the buzz, and it's probably one of our most popular channels. And it's uh it's where we uh we bring outside perspective on in so we're bringing guests on in but it has this learning and development kind of twist to it uh that broadens our 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 perspective and so while it it originally started as kind of targeted towards our sales force it really evolved into really the audience is everybody within our organization um and then we then then we started to put in okay what's the marketing piece what's what's the information that we need to make sure that's relevant to uh, kind of our target audience so that became a piece and then the one that we're probably uh, oh gosh there's two more channels that came on in one that we're really proud of is this this well being one and it's 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 a piece that really within Johnston's went kind of unspoken for a while and it's became really important for us as an organization to focus in on is what's the well-being of, of our employees and and help them understand kind of what what they're going through is is really pretty normal and so it, it's allowed us to bring in some guests and some different perspectives that there's no way we would have ever considered before and uh it's been a really interesting time to gain some feedback from that. It's been super helpful, you know, growth mindset, uh, the whole Zoom mentality, being isolated, uh, having this, you know, everybody's kind of trying to figure this thing out, whether it's uh, professionally in the office or at home with your, with your family running around or your dogs barking in the background. I mean, we're all trying to navigate that thing. And, and, and this is, it's given us an, a, a really a voice to kind of, uh, add some, some, it's okay. We're going to make this through and we can connect our people in, in that way. So that one's been really big. And then the last one that really our, our area sales managers came to us and they said, Moy, we want to share all the good stories that are going out in the field. What are some of the best practices? What are, uh, not just what's working, but what are some successes, you know, because you feel beat up when you're all by yourself. A lot of times you're looking at all the challenges and you kind of forget about the opportunities. And so 
our area sales managers developed kind of their own podcast and that was kind of cool. And they went out and all that they're really doing is just interviewing the people out in the field and, and their customers. And so that turned into something that was completely and totally unexpected, but really, really valuable. There's a few points that you brought up there. And one that I really like is the fact that not only are you bringing in, let's say that high level company overview podcast, that's uh, like you said, it's on a schedule, it's weekly, right. uh, but you also took inventory during this time that we're in to also introspectively look at the employees and say, okay, we're in this time frame, So we have this information that you're delivering, which is great. That's, you know, in an essence, it's very much like an audio newsletter, but you exactly. guys also took the opportunity to come back and say, you know what? We also want to check in with our people. We also yeah. want to make sure that our people are not just connecting with the content across the company, but make sure that they're being taken care of. And I think that, because you talked about all of these different kinds of podcasts you have, it showcases what you can do with podcasting, not just, okay, we're going to deliver content that right. is time sensitive or content that's about the company, but we can also have an even more human element to it. We can check in with our people. We can make sure that we're sharing these success stories, not just for the work that we're doing, but for the people in their personal lives. I think that can't be understated. Yeah, it's, it's been super exciting. I mean, we, we kind of had a limited vision at first, uh, especially the people that weren't really familiar with what the possibility could be. Um, but we kept pushing a little bit to kind of uh, uh, expand that box, if you will. And now we're, we're fully coloring outside those lines. It's been really cool. And bringing in some outside perspective is something we probably would not have considered before. Uh, and it's really been, uh, it's been, it's been eye opening. It's been fascinating. It's been interesting. Um, and, and it's also given us the ability to take what we're so good at that people aren't really all that familiar and start to share that in a different way. And so we do have one public channel. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, 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 kind of share that too, because it's been really, really important in our overall strategy. And, uh, and it's really about, it's, it's about brand awareness. You know, it's a, we kind of talked about it in the very beginning. We're famous for all the product things, you know, but if you really think those product things really celebrate moments that are super unique and the value that we can bring to the outside world with that brand, we're doing it every single day. And most people just aren't aware of that. So this podcast is, uh, uh, it's called Connected, uh, is, uh, has been really uh, impactful. And, and we're just getting the wheels chur turning, quite honestly, in, in how great it can be. But we're, we're really excited about a, a lot of this. And that's one of the words about marketing a company too, right? It's not just the products that you sell, but it's the message behind them. And the fact that you have these internal podcasts, but you have a public facing one that lets the people know, okay, I mean, these are the products that we sell, but look at the other work that we're doing within our communities. I think that's a really powerful point there. Yeah. And with audio being such a powerful platform, this gives you the ability to create moments with that podcast, letting people not just see, okay, cool, here's an advertisement or a write-up on something great we did, but they can hear right. the passion behind the message that you're doing for those specific parts of the events, which is great. Yeah. What, what's been so cool is we get to share our purpose, you know? So many times a purpose and a mission becomes like this fancy brochure and we kind of hand that on out and that's cool, but now you can hear it. It's a living, breathing thing and, and it's our goal is to help share that with as many people as we can, but not just share it, but help them experience that. Uh, and, and really podcasting has been an important, is going to be an important part of that formula for sure, because it's, it, it brings that to life in a, in a way that is not uh, account by account or person to person. It, it, it gives this ability to, to really reach a much broader audience much quicker. Now, in what ways have you seen podcasting bolster and foster communication across your company? And even by that, since we've touched on bits and pieces of that already, how yeah. have you seen the feedback across the organization of Justin's? How have you guys seen the feedback around the podcasting go? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So this idea really started with our sales reps. Uh, our, our sales reps normally 
would be in their cars all day long going from place to place to place. We're very much a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, operating model. Right. And so our reps came back and said, boy, it'd be really cool if your communication was, you know, we could get it on your phone and whenever, we could listen whenever we we'll listen or watch whenever we, uh, whenever we had some downtime, you know? And so that's kind of what started it. It actually was about six months before COVID even hit. Um, and so that kind of, it's what got us going. And then we bumped into Podbean. But the, the thing that it has allowed us to do is, is really start to, uh, 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 create the strategy of, of staying connected in, in a cadence that made sense in a different way. Um, and, and so that channel just started to expand and the possibilities started to expand. And that became really exciting and intriguing to us. Uh, and then once we got into it and the feedback started coming in from the Salesforce and then our internal folks you know, while we weren't ignoring them by any means, there was some appetite there, especially being remote. So the feedback uh, became really important. Uh, and we started reaching on out and really being able to take the pulse of what was going on uh, in, in this feedback loop. And and while that wasn't directly uh, part of Podbean, it was the result of Podbean, uh, which, uh, which was really kept us oddly enough, almost better connected than what we were before. Um, and that part, that part, I don't know if we anticipated it. We thought we were hoping that that was a possibility, but it gave us this two-way communication. Um, that, that's just at a different level than what we were before. And I wanna to touch briefly on something that you said that I didn't think we would expect to, but I think this is an important part for businesses that have field reps or uh, people in the commuter times. I think a lot of CEOs and a lot of managers in those places go, okay, I really wanna see how I can make the best of uh, that commuter time, right? Because a lot of the times those are times where maybe employees will, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll do different things. For example, they'll use that time to listen to the radio, they'll use that time to right. call loved ones, things of that nature. And all of that is extremely important for keeping the facilities about themselves throughout the day. However, yeah. now that you have this resource of podcasting, something that's accessible uh, basically anywhere, actually anywhere, yeah, absolutely, you have the ability now to build that into your workflow. Hey, when you're commuting, make some time in your day to listen to this specific podcast, this specific podcast, or hey, we just released this new training on this new product. Take a couple minutes, take however long the training is to listen to it while you're on the road to the next school or to the next place. And I think that's really important because I think with podcasting, you now are able to reshape the employee experience, the employee journey, and really kind of create this atmosphere of, you know, you can put the work day into that nine to five or whatever the work day yeah. is supposed to look like, as opposed to, okay, you've done the work. Now you have to make extra time afterwards. I think that's really important. And, uh, you know, it's not something we talk about all the time, but you brought it up. And I think that's really important for people that are using uh, field reps also. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, we're in a little bit different world, although it's not completely unique. You know, our, our reps are independent reps, so they are not reporting to us. So it's really important that that value proposition that we have and that ability to really make a difference in their business and their lives uh, is, is paramount. And so we really focus hard on, on how that, on how we can add, uh, add value to their their operation and and that's what's really let hey anybody we've we've always had you know whether it was an email newsletter or some sort of weekly communication we've always had that um and this has allowed us to keep it in a single spot and streamline it and and uh communicate it in a little bit different way but the part that's been really exciting is is again kind of how we started today is is it's allowed us to expand uh, that value proposition, you know, it's, it's allowed us to bring people on in that we probably wouldn't gain their perspective and whether it's, it's uh, social, emotional well-being, physical well-being, uh, business operations, how to connect. Uh, we had, uh, we have a popular series right now that's in, within the buzz that is, um, we brought in other successful uh, sales representatives from other industries and asked for their keys uh, to, uh, to their success. Uh, we brought in uh, 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 mental, uh, mental uh, tough 
deafness uh, <laughs> experts, which oddly enough uh, was fascinating. We brought in coaches. We brought in um, we brought in all sorts of people that have added something that we probably wouldn't have had otherwise. And it's given them the opportunity of, you know, if they need a little moment of inspiration or lift up or something to kind of get them into a different space, uh, we've empowered that, you know, and that's, that's been, uh, it's, it's hard to measure the impact that that has. And again, we're all kind of wrestling with that, you know, the, the world that we're in right now. Um, and, and this has really helped us, you know? Uh, so our reps were, like I mentioned before, are generally face-to-face. -face, so this whole remote thing was brand new to them. So we brought in some sales reps that work the remote thing. That's, the, that's their business model. Um, that's completely foreign to our folks. And so it was really great to hear how they do it and how they set up their day and, and how, what their routine looks like and how they can engage with their customers still in a, in a really uh, uh, authentic and timely manner that is, is still really effective. And that may seem strange uh, to, to some in the audience, um, because that's your normal everyday life, but that wasn't ours. And so it, it really, it really helped us gap that. Now we're talking about all the great content you're putting out internal public. You're talking about how you're connecting your team. I think one of the most important facets too, that we want to touch on is the content production. So yeah. walk us through a few points of the uh, production of the podcast, who creates some of the content, who produces the content, and then how does the content get released to your audiences? Yeah, that's, it's a really great question. And it's one that, um, I, I wear a lot of, I wear a lot of different hats. I mean, technically I'm in learning and development and I'm just, I, I'm just a, 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 a department of two. Uh, so it's not like we're, and we're a pretty big company. Um, uh, and so it's not like we're overflowing with a bunch of different resources, but w what we've done, uh, most of it flows through here. Uh, but at the same time, we aren't overproducing really anything. And, and maybe that's, I, I was really kind of shocked at how easy it was to publish. <laughs> I, I thought there was a lot more to it. And don't get me wrong, there are different levels of production and, and sure. quality and so on. Uh, we're a little bit more grassrooty. So I mean, kind of like what you see right here is what we portray just about every day. It might vary from setting to setting. Um, but what will happen is we'll gather some ideas around, uh, you know, just what the content should be. And then, you know, some of the content is interviews that are just simple Zoom interviews just like this. And, and we use that. And then we'll, 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 we'll take maybe 15 minutes to create an episode by putting a bumper in the front, a bumper in back, adding a little bit of music. And that's it. It's really stuff that I've just kind of discovered, I, I am by no means a, a technical expert on anything, um, but I've, I've learned in a really short period of time that we can make it look pretty doggone good uh, with not a lot of effort. And so that was part of it. And then the, some of the content, our, our field reps are starting and our people are starting to contribute. So, you know, whether they shoot it on their phone or whether they shoot it in, uh, in their, they Zoom with themselves or whatever it may be. It, 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 there's a lot of different ways that we've started to gather that content and it's super easy to kind of share it back and forth and then create it. So it's not... It's not so. It's not like overproduced. It's not. We don't have a separate team someplace, kind of putting it all together. It's pretty much, you know. I probably spend maybe two, three hours a week, maybe, um, putting together the content for the upcoming weeks. And so it's. It hasn't. I, I. I was shocked at how easy it was to tell you the truth. When you said people are making them on their phones too, and like maybe you had said, listen, I'm not the most technically savvy when it comes to this yeah. stuff, but you're still able to create this content that resonates with people. Again, that's one of the great things about podcasting too, is you can have a multi-thousand dollar studio if you so choose, but really, so long as the content you're talking about is engaging 
and the content that you're talking right. about is pertinent to people's roles and people's lives, they're going to go ahead and take inventory and listen to it. And in today's technological environment, many of us in the uh, workforce already have things like laptops and already have phones right. that are it's extremely powerful. And many of us already listen to podcasts, which is usually a big help because people that yeah. already have a general frame of reference. Yeah. Uh, but we've done even tests with things like Apple AirPods and EarPods. And, you know, we see a lot of success with that. We have people yeah. that are using blue products, uh, the Snowballs, the Yetis, uh, Samsung yeah. Q2Us, things that aren't breaking the bank, let's say, but are just going, okay, we're going to give you an even more professional grade sound. You have a free program on your computer or uh, right. an inexpensive program on your computer. And so long as you know where the record button is and you know a few simple steps, you can create a really professional sounding product that most people would be like, wow, did you get somebody to do that? Are you a professional at this? And you're like, no, yeah. I just had the will to do it. And it was really cost effective. Let me show you yeah. how. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's funny that you bring that up, John, because it's uh, I didn't know anything about podcasting. Zero. I, I, w I listen to podcasts every now and then. And uh, and it's really where I started to pick up, you know, OK, the, that's that's a great idea. We ought to do something like that. And so I started to investigate it a little bit. But suddenly I became the podcast expert somehow, some way, you know, and it was really You're the just guy. Me, yeah, <laughs> it just became me just kind of goofing around and exploring a little bit. And the next thing you know, is it, it's kind of taken on off. And so that part was really cool, the way that it evolved. And you know, we've learned some too, once we got into it, we learned that, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to keep people's attention if it's a monologue the whole time, you know, right. it's real, it, it, you got about two minutes and 37 seconds, we can tell that, you know, if it's not great, it's it, there's a very short attention span, which is completely, I, I would, I'm the same way, you know? And so the, this whole interview thing, even if it's a weekly update, we really are starting to work on what's the format of that? You know, we can do that in a different way and we can make it really interesting uh, in a conversational tone as opposed to a lecture kind of monologue tone. And so that uh, we've learned a lot about how to connect and communicate with folks uh, remotely too, which has been, to me, I find really fascinating. Absolutely. And now once you have the content created, once it's released, how does Jocelyn's create awareness and engagement in the workplace around the new content being released? Um, I'm sure there was a little bit of an adoption period where yeah. you saw it ramp up over time, but maybe initially people were getting used to the new platform or yeah. they were used to other modes of communication. Uh, once you start introducing podcasts and letting people know, hey, this is what we're doing, you know, you get a lot more engagement, you get more integration with people's daily lives. But how do you create that awareness and engagement? How did you initially also? Yeah, that's a great question. And honestly, we're in the middle of that journey right now. Um, sure. And it's, um, it's been interesting. So a little background about Justin's. We've been around forever, traditional brick and mortar. We touched on that earlier. But our, our sales team, uh, the average tenure is 25 years in, oh, wow. in that position. Um, so that doesn't mean that people that have been in a, in a position for 25 years are not tech savvy, but uh, they aren't uh, tech natives either. And so that, that posed a little bit of a challenge for us when it came to any sort of change management, you know? And so uh, it, we were very deliberate on, on kind of the buildup to it, the why behind, behind everything, and then the value statements that went along with that. So uh, we went on about a, you know, kind of a month long kind of almost PR campaign that we're making this transition. This is the reason why here's the value that you will receive. Um, so that part was really important. And we did go through, uh, uh, we, it was part of uh, an actual training uh, and development piece. We, we call it the yearly kickoff that we did back in late January. Of uh, uh, Okay, let's make sure that we can get it loaded on your phone uh single you know we went through the single sign-on process so that made it uh some would say easier some would say harder it just kind of depends who you are sure. um and then you know how do how do you right now oddly enough we we've been going we've been tracking it you know our engagement and all of that and we discovered that some people didn't have like notifications and alerts uh in the following features kind of turn on and activated through their phone so we just uh just this week we just released uh some training about how to make sure that you realize that there's new content in there and and we ran a dual path for about 
probably about three weeks when we first started. So we were communicating both, but when in, in uh, multiple channels still like email, but we would always lead it back to, Hey, this is switching on over, uh, you know, permanently here in the next few weeks. So make sure that we're up to speed. Uh, and so it's been a growth thing. Um, we're not completely there yet, but we're getting better. We're gaining momentum. Uh, it's been really exciting to watch. We watch the data behind, which I, again, uh, Podbean has been excellent with uh, allowing us to kind of uh, look at the analytics of, of, of who's engaging, how they're engaging, what's valuable, you know, the, the unfortunately, Fortunately or unfortunately, their, their watching and listening habits are, are pretty obvious uh, when you start to dig into the analytics. And, and so you have, to, you have to look at that data, you know, and it, it caused us to make some adjustments along the way. And it's been good. We're not, we're not completely there yet, but we're, we're, we're pretty good. And for the first time, we're probably measuring it where before we just felt like it was good if we sent out an email, everything was covered. And it's, it's, it's also caused us to take a really hard look at how we're communicating and what we're communicating and, um, and, and maybe be a little bit more thoughtful, more strategic about the whole thing. And those analytics can really help you kind of talk to the point that you spoke about earlier of uh, figuring out how much of the attention span you really have with your employees also. You know, we think about the world of podcasting, especially public facing podcasts. We have podcasts that are, you know, 10 minutes. We have podcasts that are three hours. We have podcasts that people will go back to for enjoyment for just periods of time. But, you know, for your use cases, you may be able to, and a lot of people are using these analytics for that point that you just stated, right? If you see that you have a listenership that's engaged for, you know, maybe half of your podcast and at the end there's a drop off, maybe people know, okay, towards the end is where, you know, some right. of the information that may have been covered in other, uh, other communications, that's where that is. So I know that the real crux, the meat of what's going to be special about this is in the first couple of minutes. What you're able to do then is you're able to go back and curate the content that you know is going to be the most engaging, the most pivotal right in those couple minutes. And if that means that your episodes are 20 minutes, great. If it means that you have hour long episodes, great. If it means that you have two minute episodes, great. The point is those analytics have allowed you then to go back and create the content that best suits the needs for, uh, for Justin's. Yeah. And we, we haven't, I, you bring up a really great point because we would, we would have interviews kind of like this. And at first we were just, um, blasting out the full interview, you know, and, um, they were great. Don't get me wrong. They were, sure. I thought they were, they, I thought they were really good and they were, they were very insightful, but we saw that once it kind of reached the 20 minute mark that there, there was a drop off. So we ended up taking something like this and chopping it up and making it into different segments, which again, I mean, it sounds like really like, uh, you know, that's, that must be a lot of production time and it's really not. I mean, we could make two or three segments really easy uh, and, and share it. And then, uh, we can do that at a national level too. We can break things down into more, uh, my, uh, 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 smaller nuggets, I guess, and, and keep them super short, almost like micro bursts of learning or, or information. And, and that part for us is, as really, uh, it's, it's helped us, you know, it's, it's helped us think about how to interact in, again, in a, in a, in a more meaningful way to our, our audience. Yeah, and that's not an uncommon tell either. You have a lot of people who look at that engagement. And like you said, we have these longer form interviews, but you may, for example, get a point of, you know, some, like for example, when we talk about the production side, even in this interview, someone may feel very comfortable in the space of uh, creating the space for people to know about the podcast, but they may go, okay, the hurdle that I need to jump over is I need to figure out the team that's going to create this. I need to figure out the space in the week and in the months to create the content. We can go ahead and create a small clip and target that to specific people. So someone who's, let's say the head of HR looking to bring this in or somebody who is looking to bring this to the next level, they can go, okay, here's the piece that means the most to me. I think that's really important. And like you said, you see now that you can create that content, even those smaller bites at not just a uh, smaller level, but also to the national level, like you talked about. And that really speaks to some of the ways that you've been able to take podcasting and 
it really exploded across the company here. Um, if a business is considering bringing podcasting into the workplace, to end our interview, I always like asking businesses this question. What is one piece of advice that you would like to offer in support of internal podcasting? Yeah, I, I think that I think the biggest thing, and and sometimes sometimes we think about it from probably the wrong perspective. We think about the information that has to go out, right? Um, and that that's a broadcast, and and sh sure, people have broadcasts, and yes, there's information that has to go out. But I, I think the thing that uh, that has excited me the most is we have to consider the audience what's valuable to the audience and which ways can we deliver that information that is uh intriguing sticky uh and from their perspective um and that's caused us to really dive in and segment how it goes and so one of the pieces of advice that i would have is um you know, it's it's really super tempting to say, okay, here, here, let's make one channel, and it's just, you know, whatever your topic is, that's what the channel is, and it's kind of all encompassing. I I would recommend that you have a variety of channels, and and oh, by the way, you reserve the right to make changes and grow along the way. So if you right. see another need or if you see another opportunity. Um, don't be afraid. E even if you change uh, change a channel in in midstream, you know that that's okay. You you reserve the right to make it better. And, and so that's one of the first things that we did is we went out and we listened. Okay, this is the, what are the challenges going to be? What are the challenges that we need to communicate and to share? And what are the solutions? And how do we do that? And we knew that there would be a little bit of an adoption bump at first because of our audience. We knew that um, we knew that there was a really big opportunity to really um, segment the information instead of just dumping the information. And then, uh, which the channel certainly helped us do. But then we we got really. Uh, um, much better at thinking about how to how to share that information. Uh, it, it's, uh, it allowed us to bring the audience on in and interact with people and bring, bring peers on in that, um, that maybe we wouldn't have done before. Uh, and it's, like I said before, it's really opened the door for some outside perspective, which we've never done before. Um, and so I, I, would, I would say, okay, let's really look at your audience, figure out what they need and and where does that match up to what you feel they need and and it's really the, our, our job our job internally is to help them empower them to that next level regardless of where they are it makes no difference they could be a top performer they could be a bottom performer that, that makes no difference we just want to help them get better so what how do we target that message and provide them the opportunity to gain something that they haven't before um, so I don't know, John. I feel like uh, I feel like that was like a, a like a, a like an all encompassing uh, uh, kind of answer and kind of deep. But man, listening to that audience is just so 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 important in figuring out how you connect and drive that value down to them. Yeah, I think it's really important. I think the fact of also you talking about segmenting the content is extremely important because I think a lot of people when they first come into a new communications tool, whether that be, you know, video communication, whether that be podcasting, whether that be email, whatever the case may be, I think we're all pretty familiar with the way that email blast can say, okay, I have 15 pieces of content. It's here, right. take it. And I think that a lot of the times we may think initially going into it, starting podcasting, okay, now we're just creating an audio version of that. But I think yeah. when we talk about fatigue across organizations and across employees, you know, that is one thing that comes with it is the fatigue of, okay, we're going to be sitting in an hour and a half Zoom meeting or, okay, and we're going to be going over everything or, okay, we're going to be sitting here trying to make sure that we tackle all 15 points in the email uh, that, I mean, all of it's obviously important, but you end up getting this fatigue and people starting to zone out at certain points. Whereas, like you said, okay, maybe there's a specific 
uh, podcast that you have for your sales team. Maybe there's a specific podcast that you have to your marketing team. Number one, what you're able to do is you can still have that overarching uh, podcast delivery, but then you can number one, create shorter, more engaging, more poignant content that touches everybody. But then also you can have these breakout groups and these breakout podcasts, which are again, shorter form, more to the point, more deliberate and let people know, okay, this is what you really need to focus on for your role. This is what we're really focusing on uh, in this quarter for your specific division. And that I think is really where you start to see the biggest jump in engagement as opposed to it being, uh, for lack of a better term, just a data dump of all of the things. Right. You're able to create the content that most suits the needs of that audience. Yeah, I kind of, kind of think, I always think about it as a meeting. I mean, the meetings that I really struggle with are the ones that you go on into when it's face to face and you, you start walking through a PowerPoint deck yet right and people are just they're reading off the lines that are in the powerpoint thing i mean i struggle with that i want that conversation i want that interaction i want the ability to uh connect in a different way and to learn in a different way and to ask questions i mean all of those things is what it allows us to do and i guess the one the, the last thing that i would say john is I, everything that we talked about if i was to stand on back and listen to what we just talked about for however long it's been um it can sound really super overwhelming i i would imagine i uh, i i mean that we, we went through a lot of different things and a lot of things that we do it's so easy it's just so doggone easy to to create content and to put together a strategy and to actually publish and keep up and to look at things it's not it's it's not some big elaborate process that takes days and weeks and months to kind of do it's not it's not a big investment on my part of time um as far as the mechanics of publishing and doing all of this there's uh, it's actually opened up the door a little bit to what are some creative ways to kind of uh promote and, and highlight and provide themes uh and so that part's been refreshing but it's not it's not i, I don't want to scare people away that it's this right. huge huge investment of time you know i sit there and i look at like this studio i mean it's it's maybe a thousand bucks i got wrapped up in this thing that's it there's 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 nothing all that fancy i look at what it takes for me to produce uh, uh almost all this content you know uh, on on my little laptop and it's you know it might have cost me 80 bucks maybe i mean it's not it's not that hard and i knew nothing about it ahead of time so it's it's really cool how it's how it's transformed an organization uh with really low entry point I love that. I love speaking about the easy entry point too. Cause like we said, there's so much that we expand upon. There's so much in terms of uh, commitment in terms of investment that we talk about from a content perspective, but really at the end of the day, you have a lot of the technology in your hands. There's a lot of ease already in creating the content. Our platform makes it easy for you to get the content into right. the hands, eyes and ears of your audience that you need to. Uh, so again, really to be able to create this new engaging piece of content or pieces of content uh, for your audience is just super easy. It's only a few clicks away and it just makes it a really engaging experience. And Mark, I thank you so much for making the time to chat with us today. I think we really got a great idea of how Justin brings the podcasting to life within uh, your place of work. So again, I thank you so much. I know our listeners are gonna thank you so much for all this information. Thanks for making the time. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. It was uh, it was an honor to even be asked. So I appreciate it. We're grateful.